you want to get your patients and your workout partners and your clients to lose weight, you've got to get their insulin down. Rosalind Yalo, who won the Nobel Prize in 1977, said that in 1965. It was true then. It's still true. That's how you have to think about this. And the way you get insulin down is you get them off carbohydrates and you hope like hell that butter and bacon are health foods. It was just a matter of time before Gary Tops joined the ranks of the mighty professors as he is one of the more famous professors that most of the other professors all listen to for some really odd reason. I wonder why that is. Oh, that's right. They're all professors. Gary Tobbs is most notably known for writing a few books, Good Calories, Bad Calories, Why We Get Fat, and most recently, The Case Against Sugar. If you've ever had the pleasure of listening to Gary Tobbs speak, then you'll quickly notice that he's a very fluent and educated speaker. He can come off as a very convincing figure if you don't know much about this health, food, and lifestyle paradigm, or if you're at least not willing to question him or look at the scientific literature to contest any outlandish assertions that Mr. Tobbs will speak of. And believe me, with the amount of craziness this dude speaks, you'd think he'd be speaking on behalf of Uranus, the planet, perverts. So as you can see from the intro clip of this video, Gary Tobbs is a big believer in the low carb, high fat diet. He believes the reason people get fat and sick is primarily due because of sugar. He believes sugar is the main reason why westernized civilizations today, such as America, are currently facing an obesity and diabetes epidemic because of sugar. He believes sugar is bad because it spikes insulin, which promotes fat storage. Now, I don't think anyone is gonna debate that sugar or any processed junk food that has sugar as types of healthy foods to be consuming on a constant basis, but to conflate processed junk food with whole plant foods is just idiotic at best. I mean, Come on, son. Tob's opinion is so strong against sugar and keeping insulin levels down that he believes all carbohydrate-rich foods are bad for human consumption with the exception of vegetables. He narrates this point in a presentation he gave titled, The Quality of Calories, Lessons from the Front Line, Zurich and Low Carb, High Fat in Practice. So according to Tobbs, insulin is the reason why people get fat. Well, if that's the case, then he better not eat any of those meats he recommends because meat is more insulinogenic per gram than a variety of foods consisting predominantly of carbohydrates as shown here. Ooh, that's really got a sting. I mean, look at this. Here's. McNumnuts here preaching low carb diets to keep insulin down and the foods he's recommending are more insulinogenic per gram than the foods he's telling people to avoid. I guess that's why Gary Tobbs calls this low carb diet a hypothesis towards reversing chronic diseases like obesity and diabetes, which by the way, calling obesity a disease is a stretch, but whatever. We get the point. Either way, Gary Tobbs resorts to anecdotal experiences because, you know, anecdotal information is the most reliable and accurate source of information. I wonder why he falls back on anecdotal experiences rather than the scientific literature, which by the way, I'm not saying to throw out the anecdotal, any type of anecdotal experiences, but usually anecdotal experiences are consistent or at least in line with the scientific research. So why doesn't Gary Tobbs have any type of scientific research to back up his claims? This is probably why. 
Gary Tobbs started a nonprofit organization called the Nutrition Science Initiative, short for Newsy, back in 2012. Now, the main objective of Newsy is dedicated to improving the quality of nutrition research. Really? Now, so. Newsy was able to acquire $4.7 million and then an additional $35.5 million over the next five years from in 2013 from the Laura and John Arnold Foundation. With some of these funds, Gary Tobbs and his nonprofit, Newsy, uh, were able to fund a study. Newsy was able to recruit researchers and fund this pilot study, but unfortunately, the results didn't pan out to the agenda of Mr. Tobbs. You see, Gary Tobbs believes excess insulin is the culprit of obesity and diabetes, and calories do not have anything to do with excess fat gain in humans. But according to the study he funded, a ketogenic diet was no more effective at losing body weight in obese or overweight men than the standard American diet when controlling for calories. See, body fat loss actually slowed during the ketogenic diet. And when the subjects were on this ketogenic diet, increased protein utilization was used probably for energy. And there was an increase in loss of fat-free mass. And this is compared to the standard American diet. The ketogenic diet is worse than the standard American diet for loss of body fat, at least according to this study. Let that sink in for a second. So this study essentially blew up in Gary Tobbs' face at a measly cost of $5 million, but thanks anyways, Tobbs. You just helped further prove the ketogenic diet or a low carb diet is horrific for human health. Most people already know this statement I'm about to elaborate on about the ketogenic diet, so don't mind the bit of spitballing I'm about to do. See, the ketogenic diet is shown to have some positive effects for people who suffer from epilepsy. So this diet is for people with Epilepsy, people who are epileptics trying to improve their condition. So why the hell is it being marketed by professors like Gary Tobbs for weight loss? Yeah, well, of course, that explains a lot. It's not the first time we've seen that, right? Screw it. Let's see what else Gary Tobbs has to say. So in this case, Atkins is a conversion narrative at its finest. He wrote, Dr. Atkins, a humble corporate physician, is fat. He begins searching for answers. He tests his unorthodox views on himself. As if by magic, he loses weight. He tests his unorthodox views on patients. As if by magic, they lose weight. Incredibly, has come up with a diet that produces steady weight loss while setting no limit on the amount of food you can eat. I just... It's dark in here, so we can't really see this, but how many of you in this room have had a conversion narrative exactly like that? Like virtually everyone, right? This is a tactic that anyone can use when all else fails. Just use that beautiful anecdotal non-evidence to get your point across. But let's look into Robert Atkins, the creator of the Atkins diet, and see what nuggets we can find. Sources have it that Robert Atkins died from traumatic brain injury after falling on some ice, but there were a slew of questions on Dr. Atkins' overall health before the brain injury incident that eventually led to his death. One of the questions were, why was Dr. Atkins weighing it at a very sloppy 258 pounds? Well, according to Dr. Stuart Trager, who's a chairman of the Physicians, Atkins Physicians Council, Atkins gained 60 pounds of fluid during his nine day stay in the hospital leading up to his death. Really, 60 pounds. Dr. Atkins gained 60 pounds of weight in nine days while being in a coma, being bedridden. Now this right here has gotta be some type of world record. Apparently, Dr. John McDougall agrees with me. Not necessarily the world record part, but the, you know, the weight gain part. Additionally, Dr. Atkins' wife denied having an autopsy on him after his death. Hmm, 
I wonder if that was because Dr. Atkins himself had a history of heart attacks, congestive heart failure, and hypertension. I wonder if that had anything to do with that. Hmm. So there you have it. Dr. Atkins was a fat and sick man with heart disease, and the whole Atkins crew was trying to cover up as much information as possible, probably for profits, and Gary Tobbs approves of this scam artist. I wonder why. Gary Tobbs wouldn't be trying to do the same thing now, would he? Well, maybe once we see those empathetic words come out. And this is what I learned interviewing these hundred physicians. If your patients are getting heavier and more diabetic each year, and you're telling them eat less, exercise more, eat mostly plants, you're giving them conventional wisdom and it's not working, and they're just getting fatter. And the diabetes and obesity epidemics tell us it's not working. They're just getting fatter and more and more diabetic. Then you either have to blame them. So you assume they're not trying, which is what most of us would do. They're just not trying hard enough, right? And that's where all the fat shaming comes in. That's where all the fat shaming comes in? Uh, no, no, not at all. It's called reality. Someone is fat because they're eating too much and that was proven in the study he funded. By the way, there's, from where I'm standing, there's feedback. And if we can get rid of that, that would be nice. Getting rid of that feedback would be nice, Gary? Would it, Gary, be nice, would it? You know what would be nice, Gary? If you'd stop talking all this ridiculous nonsense, that would be fucking stupendous. So lean people think I eat healthy and I exercise regularly and I remain lean, therefore I can tell other people to do that and they will remain lean also. And what they don't understand is we are not them. We are people who get fat and sick eating the foods that they eat. My take on it. So people get fat eating the way lean people eat. And that's his take on it. Anybody see what he's doing here? He's pandering the lies these supposed victims of weight issues tell themselves. Finally, someone who understands me and who isn't gonna tell me the truth so it doesn't hurt my feelings. <laughs> this is an exemplary showing of how to pussify a group of people. You know, it's all good. You're not fat because you eat too much crap and don't exercise. It's okay. Your blood work doesn't need to be improved. Even though you're borderline insulin resistant, you've got inflammation up the yin yang and your cholesterol's through the roof. It's not your fault, right? You're doing the best you can. No, 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 poor you, you civilized American who has it so bad, you know, with your houses, and your cars, and beds, and air conditioning, and clean water, and grocery stores. You know, it's so tough for people in westernized civilizations because you know, those starving kids in the Middle East have got it so good. Like it's, it's a freaking paradise over there. Clearly the westernized citizens of the world are the victim here, especially the people who prescribe to Gary Tobbs method of dieting. Gary Tobbs placates to the vulnerable by lying to them to make them believe they are the true victims, which eventually gets these supposed victims on his side so that they buy into his verbal ridiculous philosophy so that they eventually buy his products. Did you see how I connected dots there? Don't worry, you don't have to thank me. I can feel your vibes through the camera. Okay, because they can, we can eat these foods and we can eat them in quantity for the most part. We can eat satiety and we can keep our insulin low and we could not be obese and diabetic and hypertensive, etc. And they're nuts, fish, vegetables. So these are on, you know, good foods, yogurt, cheese, eggs, poultry, butter, unprocessed red meats, processed meats, and high sodium foods are also included in the foods we eat. Because when we eat them, we don't get noticeably unhealthy. Can you say that one more time? So these are on, you know, good foods, yogurt, cheese, eggs, poultry, butter, unprocessed red meats, processed meats, and high sodium foods are also included in the foods we eat. Because when we eat them, we don't get noticeably unhealthy. Because when we eat them, we don't get noticeably unhealthy. Because when we eat them, we don't get noticeably unhealthy.
Wow, when people eat fish, cheese, yogurt, eggs, poultry, butter, unprocessed meats, processed meats, and high sodium foods, they get healthier? No worries with that saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, heteropsychic amines, carcinogens, hormones, and animal proteins, because you know, they make you healthy, according to Gary Tobbs, of course. These foods even make Gary Tobbs so healthy. That's why his LDL cholesterol levels were at 116 milligrams per deciliter back in 2014, according to this blogger, since Gary Tobbs decided to pull his own blood work from his own blog. Again, I wonder why he would do such a thing. Maybe because his LDL cholesterol levels were 46 points higher than they needed to be and he probably knows this and he didn't want people to throw it in his face. I'll say the common factor that all these low carb enthusiasts have with among themselves is the sheer amount of shadiness they go about with handling their lives. How no one else within their own little communities doesn't jump on this is just astonishing. With all that said, it's about that time. Gary Tobbs, congratulations. Here's your award. So that's about it. Congratulations to the professor Gary Tobbs for now joining the ranks of the mighty other professors. And if you're an individual who has fallen into this low carb crap and maybe you stumbled upon Gary Tobbs, don't worry, it's not your fault. You're probably just an innocent bystander trying to find answers. I don't blame you. I just don't like these shady ass people. So no offense to any of you. I'm not against you. I'm just saying you're probably just an innocent bystander who got sucked up into this. So no worries there. Just do your own research and once you read the science, you'll see what I mean. So that being said, all resources will be linked in the description box down below. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to share in the comment sections down below. You know I love to engage with all of you. That being said, you know I also appreciate every single one of you. Please feel free to subscribe, like, and hit the ding dong button. You guys know who I am. I'm the Natural Hulkster. I wanna thank you for watching and please, Stay tuned for the next one.